Hi, designers, makers, artists, sculptors. Thanks so much for clicking on the video today. Over the next few minutes that we have together, I'm going to be teaching you exactly what uh, the process is for making a two-part mold out of a two-part silicone. I'm casting some concrete dishes with mine, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about that, but the process and the technique is very similar no matter what it is you're casting or whatever your final material is going to be. So follow along. Lots of great tips and steps. Um, I'll show you everything from beginning to end. And first of all, we're going to go over some of the essential materials and some of the optional materials that you're going to need. Okay, so obviously the first thing that you're going to need is the actual object that you're casting. Here is a replica of the bowl that I want to make out of concrete. I've sculpted this out of modeling wax. So really, whatever it is that you want to cast, it doesn't matter, but obviously you're going to need that. And then of course you're going to need your two-part silicone. So I'm using Moldstar 30. The uh, Moldstar comes in 15, 16, and 30. Those are in reference to how rigid or how uh, dense the silicone is. And because I'm casting concrete into mine, I'm using uh, 30, which is the most rigid or the most dense silicone. You're also going to want to get a few blocks of clay. I'm specifically using an oil-based clay because that's not going to dry out. Uh, Water-based clay might work, but we really recommend using an oil-based clay that won't dry out halfway through the silicone's curing or while you're trying to get it set up. You don't have to worry about keeping it wet. Um, yeah, just go with oil-based clay. Disposable gloves. This is going to be a little bit messy, so you're definitely going to want to get some gloves. Mold release. I'm using Man Mold Release 200. That comes in 200, 300, 400. It depends what you're doing. 200 is the one to use for silicones. And then you need to be able to measure and mix the silicone. I'm using disposable cups. Anything really will do, but just make sure that you can accurately measure the silicone and that you have enough room to thoroughly mix it. Now, depending what object you're casting or what shape it is, you may want to use a pre-made box. You could cut open a old milk jug. You could find a plastic bowl. It doesn't really matter what you use to contain the silicone when you're making your mold. It's just got to be something that uh, obviously fits your object. Now, if you're using something round or a little irregular, you may want to make your own container, which is what I'm going to do and what I'm going to show you how to do, because Two-part silicone is pretty expensive, and so if I'm putting a circular dish into a square box, I'm using a lot of silicone to fill in those corners that I don't necessarily need. So I've got some very basic aluminum sheeting. Um, get it from the hardware store for about 10 bucks, maybe. Uh, and that's going to be great because I can create any shape I want with that to sort of fit my object. Now, this is optional. Of course, you can use any sort of container that you want to cast your material in, whether it be a plastic bucket or a box of some sort that you already have. It doesn't totally matter. Just make sure that it's a smooth metal, plastic, um, something that will peel off. Now, you're gonna need some sort of container to actually cast this mold into. And because now this is somewhat optional, you can really now this next now these next few things are a little bit optional, depending on what size and shape the object is that you want to cast. You may be able to find or use a container of some sort so you already have, but I'm going to show you how to make one because I'm doing an oval dish. And if I put that into a ready-made square container, I'm using a lot of silicone to fill in those corners. And the silicone is pretty expensive, so it's actually worth my time to make a container that fits my object a little more precisely. And that way I don't have to use so much silicone. Here I've got cheap aluminum sheeting. It's about $10 from the hardware store. Um, it's just sort of a general repair product. Um, but it's, it's super great for creating any sort of shape. It's easy to cut, easy to bend, and um, it works great. 
A good pair of tin snips is going to make it really easy to cut apart that aluminum. You're also going to want a hot glue gun to seal around the edges of the aluminum to your work surface. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is uh, make the container that I need that will fit around what it is I'm going to be molding. So you can see I've left a couple centimeters, about uh, an inch and a half, two inches, around my actual object, which should be enough of a wall of silicone to create a durable mold. So to create a two-part mold, we need to take our oil-based clay and essentially find um, where the halfway point is. Not necessarily the halfway in height, but you want to find where is it its widest. So as you can see here, mine sort of curves out and then curves back in. That point there is the point that I want to be working with. So you put your object in there and then build up the clay until that point. So we pour the silicone over top of that and it just does half. Then essentially what we're going to do is flip it, remove the clay and then pour more silicone. And that's where we get your two parts from. So take your clay and just uh, fill in all of this area here and work it up, build it up, make sure it's nice and tight around the edges and that you're getting it to that uh, midway point there. Okay, so now what you want to do is take your hot glue gun and go all the way around the edge here of the aluminum so that it's uh, nice and secure to your work surface and uh, you've closed off any gaps so you don't have to worry about any silicone leaking out. Good, so just make sure it's nice and tight, that it's uh, basically watertight is what you want. You're creating the seal so that you don't have any silicone leakage. It all looks good, now we're on to the next step. So as you can see, I've got all of the clay in here. The bottom half of the mold is fully covered so that we're only pouring silicone on the top half for now. It's really important that you don't have any sort of gaps or anything around the outside or the inside edge here so that you don't get any silicone leakage. And uh, you do wanna make sure that it's perfectly smooth. Now, you don't necessarily need it to be perfectly flat because any sort of hills and valleys will come to your advantage actually because they'll be mirrored in the second half which will allow the two halves to sort of lock together as opposed to sliding around if they were both perfectly flat. And to actually emphasize it even more, I've just taken a tool here and poked a few what we call keys into the clay that of course again will be mirrored and when uh, the two halves of silicone come together to create the mold, those will perfectly lock together and it'll fit exactly as I need to because I've put those holes there. If that doesn't make sense to you right now, it definitely will in the next minute or so. Okay, so now we get to actually work with the silicone. So first things first, put the gloves on because it does get messy and it's no fun trying to get this off your skin, out from under your nails, and I'm not taking my jewelry off. So gloves, definitely necessary. And it is recommended that you actually mix the two parts individually first. Um, just because they can sort of uh, settle, separate, or whatever when they're uh, in transport or just in storage. So just make sure that you're actually working with two fully mixed components to begin with. So, got a container to mix the two in. Got my measuring container. Make sure that you have everything you need right at hand because once you start mixing, you're not gonna to wanna to start grabbing things.
Now take the two and uh, mix them together. Be sure that you get every drop from each of these containers that you can, because again, it's gotta be exactly two parts or it's not gonna set up properly. So what you're gonna wanna do is uh, let as much pour out as you can and then actually um, scrape the rest out. If you've got like a miniature spatula, that would be perfect. If not, your uh, stir stick should do the trick. Okay, so once you get it all together, just give it a stir for a few minutes. You wanna make sure it's absolutely, thoroughly, completely, 100% totally mixed together, or you're not gonna get it to set properly. So once it's all mixed together, I like to give it a few taps on the table just to help release any of the air bubbles that I might have mixed in. Now, the silicone that I'm using at least is self-degassing, which means I don't have to worry about doing this in a vacuum to remove all of the air bubbles. It will do that on its own, but just to help it along, give it a couple taps, and that helps bring some of those big air bubbles to the surface. And now we're ready to pour it right onto our mold. So there we have it, all of the silicone poured into the first half of our mold. Now this version I'm using takes approximately six hours to cure. It will cure faster in slightly warmer temperatures, but uh, it's best to just leave it overnight and um, let it do its thing. Not sure if the camera will let me get close enough here, but uh, you can kind of see that there are some air bubbles that are releasing, so that is great. So we'll let that cure and then we'll come back tomorrow and finish it up. Okay, so it's been 24 hours. I'm gonna see what I did yesterday and hope it worked out. Okay, so let's check it out. It uh, set up just like it should. It's pretty rigid, so that's great. So we're just gonna carefully remove it now from our container. And uh, while we're here, you can see, remember those little keys I put in? So those turned out quite nicely. And um, the next layer that goes around them is going to now lock in with those, which is exactly what we want to make sure the two parts meet together as they should. Okay, so again, what I wanna do is just take some of the clay and any gaps around the first part of the silicone mold and my container, I uh, just wanna fill those in so that you're not getting any leaks. Okay, so now what we want to do is take our mold release, the 200, which is good for silicones, and give everything a good even coat because uh, the new silicone will stick to the old silicone without it. <laughs> and I recommend wearing a mask. <clears throat> the uh, manufacturer's recommendations is uh, apply one coat, wait a few minutes, and then take a soft bristle brush and just sort of lightly go over it. Then you want to give it a second coat. So now we're just going to do exactly what we did before, mix the two parts together, stir it really well, and pour it on top. I'm just going to do one more thing here. I'm just going to take a piece of clay and attach it there and I want this to come above the surface of where the silicone is going to be. And the reason for that is I actually want an opening in my mold so that when I put my concrete in, any extra can come out. Um, you might not necessarily need to do that depending on what your final material is that you're gonna be casting, but uh, that's what I want to do for these concrete dishes. So I'm just creating a little channel there for that. Okay, so the second half of our mold has uh, set. So let's open that up and take a look at what we've created. And 
And there we have it, the two parts to our mold. So that's it for this video, but I am going to be making some concrete dishes out of this in the next video. So please subscribe and check back often to see what other kind of how-to videos I'm going to be making. Thanks for watching. Wow, that looks delicious, actually. No, just, <laughs> it's toxic, don't do it. But, uh, product, that's the word.